Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Glad to see your smiling faces around this part, but you know what's gonna get your face to smile just that little bit brighter? Our holiday merch. Yeah, that's who's the sponsor of today's video. If you want any of the ugliest, best Christmas sweaters ever made, then check out our merch store at the link in the video description. You can get I Learned to Build PCs from The Verge. It just works holiday edition. Anything and everything that your heart desires, whether or not Santa got your gaming PC from Walmart, it all represents who you are as an individual. It'll make sure that you can represent to your friends that you know what's up and up on the tech industry. So check out the merch at the link in the video description. We have sweaters that are ray traced and we also have t-shirts, no ray traced t-shirts. We have to work on that one. But with that being said, let's jump on into the hot news. First up, let's talk about the title of the video, which is, uh, you know, Apple thinking that the uh, iPad Pro bending, not a real big deal. Obviously, all of this started when Jerry Riggs Everything showed a video where he, you know, was able to snap the iPad Pro in half. Nothing that we haven't seen before from an Apple product, a la the iPhone 6, which gave Unbox Therapy his big break here on YouTube, and Jerry Rig Everything seems to be uh, following in the same vein. However, it's not just from egregious manhandling that the iPad Pro might come bent. It comes bent out of the box several times and uh, doesn't look like Apple really cares. So according to Apple, because they were contacted by The Verge, since one of The Verge writers actually had an iPad Pro that was fresh out of the box, a little bent. Uh, so Apple's statement on the matter was, the slight bend in the iPad is a side effect of the device's manufacturing process and shouldn't worsen over time or negatively affect the flagship iPad's performance in any practical way. Apple does not consider it to be a defect. Oh, you know that thing that's supposed to lie flat on the table? Well, they include a camera bump, so it can't do that. But even more so, you get a little wobbly, like that pan that you put in the oven and then when it comes out, it's all wonky. That's what the iPad Pros are looking like here. Apparently, Apple will replace these if you do it within the 14-day return period of purchasing the new device, but whether or not they do it outside of that hasn't been confirmed by the company at this point. But I have to ask just a practical question. How does Apple think it's not a defect, yet will actually allow customers to do an exchange based on the fact that their product is defective? Is it a defect and you're gonna allow customers to return it because of it? Or is it not a defect and a little wobbly in your iPad is okay? You just need to stop being so first world and suck it up. Not everything needs to be straight and symmetrical. That's how I imagine Tim Cook setting things. And if these are the reports of just the device coming out of the box, I can't imagine what these things are gonna look like after daily use, especially in a backpack for kids with class books and all textbooks is what they're called, or even kids in college, you know, those are still children. Any sort of like egregious active use typically wouldn't be a problem with the other iPads besides some scruffs and gashes, but it appears now you're gonna have to deal with some warping just like you did with the iPhone 6 whenever you would put it into your pocket. It came shaped like a hot dog mug. So, which is it, Apple? Defect or not a defect? I'm gonna let everybody vote in that poll up there. Do you think it's a defect or is it a feature? that's just the way things need to go. But that's not the only controversy that Apple finds themselves in right now. There is also a lawsuit going on right now over the size of the iPhone 10s and 10, all of the 10 series screens, uh, with people claiming that the notch actually does reduce the pixel count of the display. Whatever Apple's quoting is actually not the proper one. And on top of that, it's not just the fact that it has less pixels, but they're actually lower quality pixels. So instead of having three sub pixels, red, green, and blue, they only have two sub pixels. So they effectively have two thirds of the resolution of what a similar display would have been on their previous iPhone. They compare it to the iPhone 8 Plus, which does still have three sub pixels per pixel. Some people complain that the notch was a little deceptive in Apple's marketing. You can see right here, the way they curve that planet shaped thing on the screen makes it so that you can't actually see the notch in the promotional image, but it's a bit more than that. They're not just suing them for the fact that the notch was hidden, but also the fact that their displays may not be as high of a quality as you know they're claiming it to be. But good news for uh, Apple stuff, I guess. Uh, if you're interested in picking up the latest iPad, not the iPad Pro, but a 32 gig iPad, they're actually $100 off on Amazon right now. We'll have a link in the video description. 32 gigs Wi-Fi going for $230 as opposed to the $330. That's practically a steal. Uh, unfortunately, they're out of stock until December 26th, so you can't get them for Christmas, but you could you know, pick them up for with you know extra holiday money that you might have. I don't know. Or just buy a lot of our merch. I think that'd probably be a better idea. Link in the video 
the description. Then let's talk about more negative news with Facebook. They're in a lot of hot water for giving companies access to your private information, even though consumers say that Facebook never gave them the option to turn it down. Some of the big companies being quoted here are Netflix and Spotify gaining access to your private messages, even though uh, you had no knowledge of that. However, Facebook has responded. Specifically, their VP of product partnerships addressed the fact that for a lot of these services, what's happening is that people are choosing to use login with Facebook to get access to these companies, as opposed to creating their own separate login. And that comes with at giving permission to these companies to see things. Specifically, when it comes to Spotify, the VP said that when it comes to music and sending people messages directly from the Spotify app, which is a feature that it has, it has to be allowed to read your messages and it has to be allowed to write your messages in order to do that. And it has to be allowed to delete your messages in case you delete one on Spotify so that it's gone from your Facebook account as well. So it makes sense in the context of the fact that you are granting permission to Facebook and this third company to access this information, but it's not exactly given in a way that is very clear to the consumer that they are allowing these companies to have full access to their entire suite of private information. There's a whole lot of uproar surrounding this. Uh, I'm not gonna get too deep into this, but I just wanted to qu cover it quickly. And you guys can let me know down in the comments if this bothers you. Does Facebook giving access to third parties actually concern you, or is it something that you think is par for the course? Because that's how I tend to use Facebook. I never I never use Facebook to log into anything. I never use Amazon to log in with everything. And I never use Google to log in with anything because I don't want them accessing everything cross platform like that without my express permission. So I choose to not do this, but at the same time, I can understand why people use the convenience. And now they're upset because Facebook never actively disclosed this, even though it might have been passively stated in the terms and conditions of using login with Facebook. So a lot of deep stories out of the way. Let's talk about something light and bubbly, which is keyboard and mouse support coming to Xbox through Razer, they just announced the Razer turret for Xbox One coming with mechanical switches, a pretty decent mouse with battery life up to 11 hours on the keyboard if you have lighting on or 43 hours with lights off. And then for the mouse, it has 30 hours with the lighting on and 50 hours with the light off with the total price coming in at $250. Just get the Corsair Dark Core, get the Corsair K, was it the 55? That's the wireless one. And then just use a piece of cardboard or, I mean, they even have a lap thing for Corsair. You could probably pick that all up for less than $250, whether or not it has official Xbox One support. Uh, that's probably the difficulty there, but hot dang, Razer making bank off this one. Speaking of video games, Red Dead Redemption 2 is the hit of the year, slowly losing to God of War, it's narrowly narrowly losing to God of War for Game of the Year, but it appears that its console exclusivity days might be numbered. There's a video floating around on the internet showing graphical options in the menu of Red Dead Redemption 2 in a similar way that is in other Rockstar games, leading people to believe that this is indeed a early build of the PC port. However, uh, some people are saying this is clearly fake. This has happened before with Grand Theft Auto. People just used After Effects to actually create the, the menu system. Uh, there is some arguments that this could be possibly legit. I'll leave a link in the video description for you to hear those arguments. The original video already has been pulled down. So if it indeed was an actual build and it being pulled down, that could indicate that Rockstar is not happy about it, or it could just indicate that it was a troll and the person got more attention than they wanted. Either way, uh, it, could, it could go to either conclusion. In case you're interested, Red Dead Redemption 2 add-on PC, hopefully 2019. But you know where Red Dead Redemption 2 is never coming to? The Switch. Even though it's the fastest selling console of this generation, outselling the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and breaking sales targets than more than I ever thought, and with attach rates that are nearly insane. Like some of the games that are coming along like have a 50% attach rate, which is crazy. So Nintendo is crushing it with the console game. I do like the Switch. I wish it would have more games that appeal to me. They don't, so uh, it's my kid's console. But speaking of gaming, console gaming, PC gaming, we have the latest figures from 2018 to see where has video gaming money gone. And it appears that PC gaming makes up about 25% of the entire industry of gaming with console gaming taking up 28% with mobile and browser gaming taking the rest of that like 50% that's left. In total, PC gaming brought in about $33 billion of revenue in 2018, that being up roughly 3% from 2017. So it is on the upswing, but it's still no match for console, although there is the benefit that console is split into multiple different platforms. So, you know, PC master race. 
The note that I'm gonna end that on is that there's fierce competition in who's gonna get your money for your next video game because Epic recently announced that they're launching their store and they're gonna give developers an 88% split of the revenue that comes in, which is significant over the 70% split that Steam typically does. And Discord had also had their own store that was giving a split, but once Epic launched theirs, Discord said, hey, we're gonna do a 90-10 split. If you want if you want to post your games here, we're gonna give you 90% of the profits. So there's a war going on for your dollars. We'll see where this ends up. I'm not super compelled by Discord at all. I think Epic Games might have the leverage here, but I don't I don't think Discord, like I'm never gonna view that as a PC shop, to be honest. That's me personally. Will you guys let me know? Speaking of consoles and the Switch again, I don't know why I just didn't put the two Switch articles together. Anyways, that's not the point here. Apparently, because when you buy games on the Nintendo eShop, they have an all sales or final policy where you cannot get refunds, Germany has said, no, no, you can't do that. And they're actually suing Nintendo. It's not Nintendo suing people for once. Hopefully this gets overturned and you can actually return games on the mobile platform. That'd be great. We'll see where this goes. We'll keep you updated if there's any development. And finally, speaking of handheld games, mobile games, that's what I'm trying to say. It appears that PUBG Mobile actually has as many active players as Fortnite does, coming in with roughly 30 million active daily users and crossing the 200 million user mark already, which is pretty insane. That's a lot of big numbers. 30 million people a day. And then we just have a couple of fun little videos for you to check out once you're done watching Hot News. The first is the Hellboy trailer. You should definitely watch it. It's a bit different from the original. Obviously, this is now a reboot. It has a very humorous tone to it, even though supposedly they were going for more of the horror dark stuff, at least what I've heard about how they were supposed to adapt the comics. It turned like I didn't get that at all from the trailer. So we'll have to see where this goes. David Harbour seems to be doing a great job as Hellboy. Ron Perlman did equally as great of a job. So I'm excited to see this movie. Uh, and the, you know, trailer looks okay. And then if you care about Home Alone at all, which I don't because it's a terrible movie. Like I watched it again with my kids recently and it's just like, Kevin, Kevin's a punk. Like not even, like it's not, he's a jerk. Anyways, neither here nor there. Macaulay Culkin was brought in by Google to do a little advert for their Google Home setup, showing that a lot of the stunts that he pulled in the movie Home Alone could now be done with Google-related products. So check that out in case you're interested to see what Kevin McAllister looks like if he used Google exclusively. And that's where I'm gonna end the hot news. Thank you all so much for watching it. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Check out our holiday merch if you're at all interested in actually being cool for once. And I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video because I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel and I messed up the order. Love you too.